Hello, and welcome to Finding Respect in the Chaos on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm so glad you guys have joined us today. I'm here with, ready for this, everybody sitting down? Miss United States, you guys, this is big. Amanda Smith is here with me today, and I want you guys to welcome her. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about what I do and who, what's going on. I love having inspiring stories to share with you guys here. And as most of you know, this is a safe place for survivors of abuse to tell their stories and a place for advocates to share important resources. And more than anything, to show other people out there that there's hope and healing on the other side of abuse. And you can overcome with the right help and the right resources. Everyone can overcome this. You are not alone. So we have an amazing story and let's get right to your story, Amanda. I'm so excited to share this with you. Could you tell us just a little bit about your past if you wouldn't mind? Um, so we get a, a little bit of a background and we can really appreciate all the amazing things you're doing now. Yeah, so when, let's see, where should I start? When I was a kid, I fell in love with the Food Network. I remember watching it on the TV screen and I was fascinated by all these chefs who were able to cook these amazing dishes. Not just that, a lot of them had sustainable foods. They were using foods from farmer's markets or they would talk about it. So I was getting a lot of that knowledge through actual Food Network, which was really cool. Um, the second thing was I was, I had bad allergies growing up. I had dairy allergies. I was constantly bloated. I was always getting sick. So if I'd eat a bunch of sugar, um, my dad always said when you were young, you know, you would eat all that stuff that we'd feed you and then you get an ear infection. And so I always knew that I had something that was different. Like I wasn't like my sisters who could eat hot dogs and hamburgers or Taco Bell all the time. And that's what we ate. You know, every typical kid would eat something like that. But I always knew I had to be different when it came to food. And at that age, you know, I always had, I, I always told myself, I want to be that person who helps others, you know, connect with food. And, you know, you don't have to have allergies all the time, right? I mean, at that age, I was probably 12 when I realized, okay, I, I need to tell my parents I can't have that kind of food. And I, I started just kind of eating what, you know, like the vegetables my mom would serve or, you know, different things in the house. Um, I would still eat the junk, you know, I wasn't a hundred percent all there. Of course I'm 12, um, but I was really inspired by the Food Network to push forward and to, to look at what kind of ingredients they were using. And I would sneak peek whatever my stepmom was cooking at the time. And uh, my grandma cooked a lot when I was a kid. We used to go down there to LA. I was uh, raised in Bakersfield, California, but born in Torrance, California. And so my grandparents lived in the LA area in Carson, California. And we'd always go visit them on the weekends or when we could for the month. And my grandma had uh, tons of Filipino food. That was my favorite, right? All the good yummy stuff. And my favorite thing was beef and broccoli. That's all I would eat with her. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's the uh, humble beginnings of when I really realized that I love food. I absolutely love it. And so I, I know you got, um, and I can't wait to start talking about the Menahumi Chef that you start yeah. for school age kids. But can we, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing just a little bit more about some of the things that happened when you were younger that has sort of brought you to the place that you are now. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I was a kid, my parents were, you know, about three years old, they became divorced. You know, they were, I don't know what their problem was. All I know is that one cheated on another or supposedly, uh, or, you know, my mom was 16 years old when she had me and didn't really understand the dynamics of having kids. And, you know, that's a young age. And, you know, she had a second child, maybe at 18, closer to 18 years old. And now she had two kids at 18. And there was a lot of shuffling or not watching us or, you know, leaving us in different areas that weren't really safe. Um, then there was, you know, the divorce, you know, I had to stay with my mom. Um, my dad was still working and trying to make it, you know, you know, financially. And my mom just got into really bad relationships. So it was always, you know, 
one thing after another, drugs, it didn't matter, alcohol, you know, abuse, she was abused, um, you know, and I, there was some of it we seen when we were young, I don't remember it per se, uh, but it happened. And my dad ended up marrying an alcoholic and a drug addict mm -hmm. as well. And she was uh, mentally and emotional, there's different types of abuse, obviously, and mentally and emotionally, and then there was physical at t sometimes as well where, you know, anybody like that, it's like walking on eggshells and not knowing, you know, I was the people pleaser. I was raised to be that way. Like, how do I, you know, get food on the table or how do I make sure I have a next meal or I want to feel safe. And so I would always do things for people. I overgave and that trickled down into my adulthood, which I had to have a lot of therapy for and to realize, oh, that's why I was doing what I was doing and not stepping back and taking care of myself and getting into bad relationships, right? So, I mean, the point of this is that you can become resilient if you realize what the problem is and get the help you need. And don't be afraid to ask. Like, if you feel something in your gut isn't right, it probably isn't right, right? So I, um, yeah, it took a lot of um, lessons a lot of bad relationships, alcoholics, people who were, you know, drug, like I said, drugs, I thought it was normal. This was normal to me that a relationship would include drugs and alcohol. Wow. Well, you certainly have overcome all of that and went on to be an amazing, well, Miss United States, which I think you definitely deserve the honor. So I'm very glad that you got it. The title because you definitely deserve it. And now you did you start Menahuni Chef before on uh, your pageant stuff or was that after your pageant stuff? Actually it was before and it was right before I ran for the Mrs. Division because I was previously married, uh, been divorced for five years. Mm -hmm. And that kind of led into when I had my kids, I became more inspired to want to cook healthy for them because I remember when I was a kid not feeling good when I would eat super bad. So I literally, I literally created this program for schools. I wrote a curriculum and I just taught it and filmed it and got my kids involved and it just became super popular. And I thought, well, I might as well put it into the pageantry because it's a great platform, um, you know, worldwide, not just for my kids or the schools here in Hawaii. It's great for everybody around the world because we can use sustainable foods. And so mini honey chef literally means little chef. And so I teach kids and families how to cook with sustainable foods grown in the Hawaiian islands. Um, now I'm starting to, it has now expanded, not just to my kids and the local community, but now to the Department of Education at, at Chief Kamakahele. I teach the after school program there, uh, you know, teaching kids how to cook with sustainable foods, partnering with other programs and, you know, getting really close to the community at large, right? And now that I have a global platform, I'm able to, now I'm shifting and pivoting into online classes. So I'm creating an online course. It's a six module course for people to join in. It doesn't matter if you're in your family or in a classroom, all they would need is the supplies, supply it, click online, do a quick donation, and you've got your whole curriculum ready to go and where everything is, as you want to go flow through on our little platform or online and that's it, you know? And then if you want to subscribe to the, you know, this is kind of how we're doing it. If you want to subscribe to it, we'll give you monthly updates on what's next and what's coming up, you know, with Mini Huni Chef as far as recipes and new techniques. Sure, so, okay, so Miss United States, well, the, the, the United States pageant um, company, I don't know what it's called, program? It's actually, program. It's under Mrs. United States. So originally, the we've been around, we're the second, um, we've been around for a long time, maybe 35 years. Um, so they've been around and how it all started was, um, you know, we have, you know, this wonderful woman, she started this program to highlight people like me who were excited about sharing platforms like this or businesses or things that they run, um, you know, in their own local communities. And she wanted to highlight them, put them on a platform and say, hey, look, look what they're doing. They're empowering themselves, but also other people around the world with their platform. And so that was the main purpose. I knew I had entered the right pageant when they talked about platform all day. And that's what I do. So 
it's um, it's pretty phenomenal. I, I really love this system. They've been extremely supportive of my platform. You know, what it, whatever I needed, they were there and we've done tons and tons of interviews and now they're actually helping me and backing me on this whole new project on what can we do to help, you know, how do we promote you? And so we've got people around the world joining in. So this is gonna be amazing. Um, again, Mini Honey Chef, the online classes are gonna be launched in October. So look out for that. Um, until then, I'm just doing private cooking lessons. Oh, that's so great. And you know, this actually gives you that sort of in with kids too, so that if there's further services that these kids need, they're seeing you sort of on a personal basis. Um, Cause we're talking about something so intimate as food and how you eat, right? So that you, they're going to be more likely to open up and talk about other things that might be going on in their lives that you can help bring that um, educational, you know, community in with you to help about, right? So yeah. that's, that's amazing. I love that. Now you're on, on the island of Kauai, right? That's correct. So I'm on the island of Kauai. I'm 36 years old and I live on the east side of, of uh, the island. That's awesome. I love that we're talking to each other from two different islands. <laughs> that's so great. Well, so often we kind of get stuck in our own little bubble, right? And I think Oahu has been all of Hawaii, right? And I know I got to, no, no, across the ocean that way is, you know, Kauai and over there is Maui. And uh, I remember that we're all one state here. That's and right. We're all family. <laughs> one big family. And when we can get that, like you are right now, all joined together, then we can move out from there too and start to influence the mainland and other countries and, and all of that. And I think that's an important factor that you're doing that's so important. I've always, I've always known that Hawaii is, has been a huge um, highlight because we are the, uh, the state in general that is kind of like, we're, we have to be modeled by, does that make sense? Like we are our sustainability. Like if, if everything were to crash down over there, right? And the mainland, we would still be running because we have running water naturally. We have the capability to actually supply food for people here in Hawaii. And as much as we think that we can't, we can. We can grow food extremely easily here. We can share it easily. We've always done it. And that's the beauty of Hawaii. Right, I agree. One of the reasons I moved here was for the better, the healthier food, the healthier lifestyle, all of that. With I have lupus and Crohn's disease. So all of my autoimmune has been a tough fight for a lot of years. And since I've been here, I have been healthier. I eat what grows across the street. You know, I walk over to the fruit stand and grab a few things and come home. And I hardly ever cook because most everything I eat is live food, um, fruits. Um, it brings you closer energetically. I think people don't realize that. And this is why I've started Mini Honey Chef is that energetically we're all made of that substance called energy right and if we're eating from plants if we're eating you know things that are sourced from your land or anything that's around you you're ultimately going to be super healthy it doesn't matter and you know that's the beauty of Hawaii we can go outside and pick our own food and forage and so if we're not learning how to cook with it if you feel a little lost my job is to make you feel comfortable doing it and that's why i created mini honey chef is so people feel comfortable teaching their kids how to cook comfortable with farmers market finds that they don't get so stuck on the the whole thing of i need to go to costco today does that make sense oh yes absolutely that's what i meant by i don't really get a lot of stuff at the grocery store so much anymore um, I mean, it's great. It's a great luxury, right? It is a really good luxury to have. But and I, I mean, I go to the cleaning products and paper products and things like that. But to be honest, I get most of my food across the street. You perfect. Know? See, we are so abundant. And, you know, I think of abundance as what we're growing outside. If you want to become abundant, where people think it's about money, it's really about what you're growing in your yard and how you're actually fulfilling yourself with the, the really good food, right? We want the good, healthy food around us. Right, absolutely. My my last guest was um, that was on is a girl I went to high school with who is removing landmines 
from the earth everywhere in like 30 different countries and replacing it, not just pulling the landmines out, but replacing it with agribusiness so that wow. these farmers are able to go out and farm their land again. And they are. And now they've got a business and they can sell that their incredible. Land. I love that. That's the best story. People who are doing extreme things deserve praise. They deserve, you know, the the footage, the the knowing that you're changing the world, you know, one step at a time. And that includes the farmers who work their butt off. Like people don't realize how hard it is. You know, when I visit these farmers, I see people working out there in that hot sun and they're dedicated. That's their way. That's their, their light to shine, to give back to humanity is to plant the food, you know, wait for it to harvest, pick it for them and then share it. You know, it's not really about money for them. It's about the passion. And, right. you know, everybody has a gift to share. It doesn't have to be famous. You know, we're all not all famous. We're not going to be there. But what we can do is serve our people. And that's enough, right? That's enough. If you serve other people that you're living in your purpose. I absolutely agree with that, about 100%. Yep. And we don't realize, and we don't give farmers enough credit, I think. Well, Monsanto came in and sort of, you know, mega organized everything and put, put this big, I don't even know how to describe it exactly, but we know that Monsanto has his hands in so many things, although he's not over on Kuwait. Didn't you guys think? Monsanto is um, not allowed we anymore. Have, we have GMO companies here, and a lot of these lands are, are made for testing. They're testing the corn. They're testing the different things that they can grow. I can see where they're coming from. Again, we have to have perspective on everything and stepping back and using our observer. You know, the testing is really about, you know, did the plants become resilient to this chemical or this, right, or these elements? And can we grow food and become resilient on food? Um, you, you know, there's all kinds of different factors. I get where they're coming from. I understand it. Is it needed? No. And they know that. So, but see, that's where I turn and I say, no, pivot, because that's not what our lands are really made from. If you look back into history, people survived off of food off the land for many, many years without having a GMO company do it for us. You know, the whole thing is that we need to produce mass amount of food. We're actually wasting food. And so people don't realize, you know, when it comes to sustainability, it's not just about the food. People kind of are like, oh, become sustainable in the plastic. It's more than that. It's the land you're working with, the animals, it's the packaging, it's where the fuel comes from, right? And so all of that, those are all factors we really need to look into. And now more than ever with COVID-19 and this whole scare going on with all these colds, People are thinking of different ways. How do we become sustainable now? Because we can't rely on the government anymore, right? We can financially, but what are we going to do? How are we going to pivot our lives to become better and to rely on ourselves versus becoming entitled to America? Absolutely. So can you give us a few tips on how you and your family, you and your kids have sort of been making it through all this lockdown, no school, homeschool stuff? Yeah, so I have, um, you know, 50-50 with my ex-husband. And so it's been actually kind of cool because the kids get tired of being in one spot in the house all day or, you know, well, I, over here I live by a bike path. And so I'm taking them biking, I'm taking them hiking, I'm taking them out. There's no people around us. We're just adventuring here on Kauai. So, um, of course, wearing masks and we're keeping so social distancing because I do think that there is obviously a virus going around. People are dying. So... The protection is is to make sure your kids are living um, and going outside and still being a kid and not keeping them cooped into the house, making sure that they're reading, making sure that they're learning something new every single time. Not just that, they're learning practical skills about cooking and that's what mom does. So I'm teaching them that. We've been doing a lot of videos on sharing recipes with uh, farmers market finds. Uh, Malama Kauai, you heard of them, Malama Kauai? I have not, no. They have supported me since day one. They've been giving me CSA bags, farmer's market finds, and said, hey, can you post a video and share with us on what you're doing for the recipe? And I said, absolutely. And so I was doing that so that way it perpetuated information, not just to my kids or anybody who knows me, to the whole island themselves. So that way they can see kids cooking and then they, they can feel more comfortable with you know sustainable food. But it's just a way to give back. 
I think that's an important um, distinction too that you're making here, that you're not just saying, here kids, we're going to give you this food. And it doesn't matter how we made it or where we got it from, but it's good for you. Take it, right? Right, right. And the thing is the stigma, the stigma is, is that parents get a little scared and I want to talk about this. They're like, well, I want to do this recipe, but it's so detailed and I'm getting a little nervous. I said, well, and I talked to a group of moms the other day and I said, tell me what makes you nervous when you cook with your kids. They said, well, A, I don't know how to teach them. And B, I don't know what I'm cooking. <laughs> so even if they are healthy, they're like, well, how do I create healthy dishes? Because our generations, including ourselves, we've been given ding dongs, like you said, or, you know, hot dogs and things that are easily accessible food. So how do we change the, dyna the dynamic for people? And the way to do it is to actually teach people to feel comfortable and to know that it's okay. You can go to the farmer's market, it takes five minutes, take your kids, go to the house, look up the vegetable and start cooking. Like just let them participate. That's the number one thing. And allow them to use knives. That's another thing. Nylon knives on amazon.com. They're, they were five ninety five. I bought a whole kit and the kids actually learn. Right. And so if you want to learn more information on how to cut with a nylon knife, or if you want to get more comfortable with eating sustainable foods, then you're going to go to minihoneychef.org. You're going to find out. <laughs> I love that. I know my kids used to say that whenever I would go away for a, a conference or something, they would go, yay, we can watch forbidden movies and eat forbidden food because they couldn't eat it when I was home. Right. And <laughs> It would be stuff like pizza and you know, all that kind of junk food. And I'm not saying get rid of it all. I'm just saying, you know, pull back a little bit and teach a practical skill and become comfortable. Your kids are going to want to eat what you're cooking. It doesn't matter if it's super healthy or broccoli or whatever. They're going to want to try it. I've seen kids do it nine times out of 10 filming them. Even though they don't like it, they'll spit it out. They're trying it. And so that makes me happy. It doesn't matter. My son has done it so many times. I'm like, nope, keep it raw. We're not taking that out. We're not going to fluff anything with Mini Honey Chef. It's all about being real and sharing that. Hey, look, he tried it. He spit it out, but you're going to try it too. Watch, you know? So it's, it's a, it's a cool thing too. Right. So, yeah. So the whole thing, is the, the practical math skills, you're going to learn practical math. You're going to get some confident kids who are comfortable with using knives and also parents. Right. I know that my kids have both grown up, well, three, all three of my boys have grown up to be chefs. Right? One of Perfect. them is a professional chef even. And he's all about, it's got to be healthy. It's got to be good. I'm not going to give people a bunch of junk. And I think, now, why did you have that attitude when you were younger? Yeah. <laughs> you might have to fight him for it, right? You know, but not so much. They would still, they get hungry. So if you only give them one thing, they're going to eat it because what they get, you know? So yeah. um, I love it. Yeah. And then, so, you know, with mini Huni chef of the platform, I, I took it into 2015. I started running in, you know, the Mrs. Division all the way up till before I got divorced. And, you know, I, I would always get first runner up and, you know, I, I just, I like the idea of being able to advertise what I'm doing on a bigger stage. So when I joined in one last time after I got divorced, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to see if I can make states at least and as a divorced woman. And lo and behold, I became Ms. Hawaii in Oahu. I flew out there with my daughter. We won and I was so happy. Then I had to prepare for nationals and I was like, well, I'm just going to play it by ear. I'm not, I had no intention of winning. And so by the time I got to Las Vegas, it was uh, July or August when I was out there last year. I remember going there, I was a day late and I didn't get to meet all the girls. I did that on purpose because I don't wanna feel nervous, right? I got a little scared. But then I went into um, you know, the whole meeting that I was supposed to go to, pick up our packets and all that. Um, and then I felt oddly comfortable, which was not like me because I'm very shy with other people. And, but I love doing TV hosting and all that, right? Um, by the time we got to the center stage, we were doing prelims and all that. I was a little shocked because the next day they were calling out the numbers, right? Like, okay, we're at top five. And once you hit top five, you have to give a speech, right? Okay. <laughs> so I was up there, I was up there and I was like, I did not prepare. These girls are nervous. They're sweating. 
And I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm just going to do what I do and talk about it. And if they don't like it, that's okay. Because I'm already used to being first runner up, right? Love that. Yes. <laughs> and so by the time I got to top three and then top two, I was like, is this really happening? <laughs> and then I won eventually. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you did because you definitely deserve it. And your platform is just amazing. And the fact Thank that you know so this changes for kids is what's Thank so important. I'm all about let's teach the kids. Let's teach them young about all of it, about, you know, no more abuse for kids, no more, no more bad food, no more, you know, bad eating. And even those kind of things alone, just those two things alone can radically change the life of a kid and right. how they progress into adulthood. Yeah, you're teaching them life skills for a lifetime. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've only got a couple minutes left, so I want you to go ahead and tell everybody that you're sort of closing arguments, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. let us know the things that you want us to know that we didn't have a chance to talk about yet. Yeah, so if you guys want to follow me, you can follow me on Facebook at Mini Huni Chef, M-E-N-E -E Chef, H-U-N-E Chef. Um, or you can go to my Instagram. Uh, it's under Sustainable You Hawaii. That's pretty easy to remember. You can follow my journey there. But I just want to say thank you guys for inviting me. And I hope that, you know, what we're sharing is inspiring kids and families out there. Oh, I know that it is. And I want to thank you so much for coming on, Amanda. And I'm going to keep an eye on you. So I'm going to invite you back in October after everything gets up and running. And we'll see how it's all going. And you'll have to come and share yeah, with I'll us. Yeah, I'll come back on in I'll, maybe October. I'll meet you in October. There we go. Sounds like a wonderful plan. I like that. Thank all right, you guys. So see you later. All right. Take care. And I want to thank everyone for coming and joining us today for finding respect in the chaos here on Think Tech Hawaii. Please join us every other Wednesday at two o'clock. We'll see you then. Hello.